Hello, YouTubers. I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Gear. Okay. Now, I hope you've been subscribing and following the channel because I often refer to older videos. And in the past videos, uh, recently, right, we're doing the pedal board build series. And recently, we've been working on the big board. Uh, but we're also making a smaller board and uh, that's what this uh, video is going to be about um, and I had a lot of misgivings uh, about building a small board to begin with because um, I thought well I already have a big board but let me tell you something once it started coming together then I thought, okay, it is worthwhile to do. Now, uh, I guess the very first thing is, uh, let's take a look at it first and see where we're at up to this point. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the little board up to now. And you can see it here. All right, so this is a small board. And basically, um, on top of course we've got the Soul Man MIDI controller. We've got an H9 there, line six M5, which is by the way a really big pedal, it's I mean physically. Okay, and there we have a boss SY two hundred space for another pedal there and here is a space as well there's a smart clock uh, I haven't quite hooked that up yet it ran out of maybe cables um, and right here is a big space and the reason is when you choose the banks up and down right on the soul man requires an external push switch and uh, if you've been following the channel, you, you know that uh, they use these Behringer put switches right here to switch the banks up and down. And that would take up a lot of space right there. But it would fit pretty well, actually. Another thing you could do, you know, because this is a, such a small board, You could kind of hook up right there a little, you know, the little foot switch instead. All right. So that's another possibility that we could leave you space for another pedal right there. Or possibly something in between here. You know, um... Right, you could probably get the specular tempest on there. I'm not sure. Um, remains to be seen. You know, specular tempest is pretty small, um, so it, it would fit actually probably in between. In other words, somewhere in here or in here. It, you know, it depends. Um, now underneath the board, you'll see we've got the. I think that's the pig tone there. Right? The, yeah, pig tone power supply there. And underneath the H9 is, as so you can see that, is the power digital Voodoo Labs. Let's see if I can see that. You can see kind of. And there's the, there it is right there, but it's underneath the board. So it's powering um, the H9 and the M5 right now. I haven't hooked up the rest of it. And um, on top of that, you've got the uh, power strip right here. 
right? And that comes out to this yellow cord which goes to the wall. So, and the power strip basically powers the pig tone and the uh, digital, right? All right, now that's one possibility, right? And this is where I'm kind of at a standstill deciding what to do and how I want to set this up. Um, you know, it's such a small board that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of space, obviously, for large pedals. Uh, now, one thing that can be done is to take off some of the pedals and just put on a plethora X5, right? Because as it stands now, um, the only looping capability is this board, as it is presently, is the H9 has a little looper it's like 11 seconds and it's it's pretty limiting quite frankly you know um, so uh, now the plethora has a little larger uh, looping capability I think it's about 40 seconds which actually comes out pretty well but 11 seconds just doesn't quite cut it so, some options would be to add um, a, a small looping pedal, maybe over here, right, or even up there, you know, in between the, the synth pedal and the other pedal, right here. That's, that's one possibility. Um, it, yeah, the other thing is for bass emulation, you'd have to use the M5. Right? I mean, I have a, a little, it's basically an, um, kind of an octave pedal, basically. I have one on an H9, but I don't think it's quite as good as the M5, quite frankly. So anyway, this is where we're at right now. So there's still a lot of things to decide. So there are still some uh, unanswered questions. And one of them is still what pedals to put on there. Now some of them I know are gonna be on there. And you kind of saw that in the video. However, there were some empty spaces and some things I'm not quite sure about. Um, and there's a couple things. Uh, one is the looper, the looping pedal. And I usually use a boomerang pedal, but it's huge. I mean, even for the big board, it's huge, right? Um, so that obviously is not going to fit on this little board. Now, as it happens, uh, I've been researching little loop pedals. And ideally, I'd want one that's stereo and has MIDI. Right? So that it can sync um, to the smart clock and things. You know, you could add a drum machine or whatever. Or... You know, have it sync correctly to um, the other pedals, basically. And and there aren't that many looping pedals that do that, quite frankly. And, or at least do it well. Now. And, and recently, Boss came out with the little RC5. Right? And it's a stereo one-track looper. In other words, you, you only record, overdub, you know, and that's about it. But, for my purposes, I think that would be fine, uh, because I don't use pre-recorded loops, ever. You know, and I usually only use one track. Um, you know, now the Boomerang's got several and things, you know. I've often wondered about that, you know. I guess you can manipulate it differently. 
But if you overdub, you know, you can do everything you can do with several tracks on one. You know. Anyway, so I've been looking into that pedal and doing some research and things, and it does have some flaws, um, but it may fit the bill perfectly. Um, now another looping pedal I was looking at is the Electro Harmonics 1440. Um, and it just had a MIDI firmware update. Um, because the, I guess the MIDI wasn't all that great on it. Now, the 1440 um, is a, uh, in a way a lot simpler as far as features go than the Boss. You know, the boss has an LCD screen, the multicolor LCD screen. It has a built-in drum machine and those kinds of things. Whereas the Electro Harmonics 1440 uh, is just a looper, basically. I mean, it doesn't have any drum machine stuff, which is fine, you know, either way. Because, uh, you know, I, even on the boss, if, if I did get the boss looper, the drum machines would run through... Uh, guitar amp and that doesn't sound all that good you know and unfortunately they didn't make a routing capability to get the drums to go elsewhere on the RC5 anyway right because if it, if it did have that feature then you could run those just the drums you know to a, a PA or what have you but that's not the case here then there are oh, so those are the two loopers that are in the lower price range you know um, basically under 300 you know then there are um, some more expensive loopers and that includes the Boss RC500 which is a two track looper it's a little bit bigger pedal you know but it, it really has some features I would never use. I mean, it has like a little mic input, you know. You can plug in a microphone and do that kind of a <laughs> you know, to create a drum machine or what have you. And I'm sorry, I just think that's so sappy. I just, I would never use that feature. But the two tracks are very interesting. You know, in other words, you could loop one track and switch to another and things but even that I'm not I wouldn't necessarily use you know and the, the Boss RC 500 is pretty much double the price of the Boss RC 5 then there is the Pigtronics right makes a, a MIDI stereo looper but it's also in the four or five hundred dollar range if not more than that and then there's a TC Electronics uh, Ditto 4 but it's kind of a larger pedal you know and I, I kind of heard the MIDI is not all that great on it you know I'm not sure on that I'd have to I'm still researching I guess so um, possibly for this board, though, I'm really kind of leaning towards the Boss RC5. You know, uh, it has most of the features I want. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is, you know, external foot switches. You know, and they, I think they want you to use proprietary external foot switches. And they charge quite a bit for those. You know, I mean, you can add a hundred dollars easily for just the external foot switches. So you got to be real careful on that, which I don't want to do, obviously. And my current looper is the Boomerang Three. As I said, it's huge. I mean, I love that thing. It's just great. You know, has MIDI, a stereo can do quite a bit um, 
but as I said, it's just too big. You know, uh, in fact, it, it won't even fit on the big board when you add pedals. So I have it on its own pedal board. You know, and for the little board, yeah, I'm thinking of that Boss RC5. You know, and then there's another dilemma: Do, Would you buy it new or used? And there's some pros and cons. One, of course, is the warranty. You know, however, it's a, you know, boss pedals are pretty indestructible. I mean, for the most part, you know, unless you abuse them, of course. But that comes into consideration. On a used one, you wouldn't really have a warranty at all. And I've seen prices of about 250 for a new one. And um, after shipping and tax and things, about 200 on a used one. So about a $50 difference, really. Now, if you buy a new one, though, you can get a three easy payment plan. Where basically you just pay uh, three different payments to pay for the pedal. And there's no interest or anything like that. There's another possibility, and that is on the small board, I don't have a dedicated um, bass emulator, uh, Octaver, if you like. And uh, luckily, the Lion 6M5 can do that, right? It can create kind of a bass emulation sound, which I actually quite like. There's another alternative, and that is on the Plethora X5. Now, it has bass emulation as well, but it's pretty big, and it has a, a looper, and I actually think it's pretty good. You know, pretty, it's really basic, but it's just what you need, you know, if you're not going to do, you know, super long loop. I, mean, I think it's about, as I said, 40 seconds in stereo and 80 seconds in mono. Now. The one drawback, of course, is, well, it's pretty big <laughs> as well. And to fit it onto that board, or the little board, a plethora, you'd have to remove the M5 altogether. That'd be the only way to fit it on there. I'm not quite sure I'm prepared to do that, because the, um, the, the M5 has sounds that the plethora can't make. It has distortion sounds, it has a really nice compressors and phasers and delays and reverb and all kinds of stuff. I, I wouldn't be too thrilled about removing the Line 6 M5, though I love the plethora, though. It's really great. Now, they make a tiny plethora, too, right? Um, the X3, and it's just like the X5 minus two uh, slots, if you like, two switches, you know, and so it's m much more limited, you know, you basically have three slots, and one of them, for me, would, would have been taken up by the looper, and then one for the octaver, and that would leave you one, <laughs> one effect, All right, but that's a possibility, too, um, and I haven't even sized up how it would fit on the board. But I think you could probably get that on there without removing the M5. And I like very much both of those. Now, here, there are some flaws there, too. And that is that neither of the TC Electronic Plethora has synced to MIDI. Sad. Right? So, the little Plethora is... Uh, about 350 new and the big plethora x5 is like four or five hundred dollars so i mean this is getting expensive we're getting there the other thing is i ran out ran out of midi cables now mono price has these little just standard midi cables they're like three foot midi cables and they're like two bucks or whatever and you have to pay shipping so you can get a big pack of those, you know, because I mean, I'm going to need four or five, at least, MIDI cables, 
uh, to hook up just on a small board, you know. Then there's a question of whether you need them right angle or not. And you basically pay double. If you want right angle MIDI cables, you're, you're going to basically be paying about double the price of a standard MIDI cable. The advantage, though, is that it takes up less space between pedals, so you can fit more pedals on. You know, the truth is, I'd rather kind of uh, like to get away with just standard MIDI cable and just space out the pedals a little more. So these are all things I'm considering, you know. Uh, and then audio cables too, you know. I saw you can buy some right angle audio cables, you know. And I mean, I, I understand they have the little six inch and the 12 inch, you know. But those always seem too short for me to actually fit well between the pedals and things. I know, so these are all things that I'm working on. I just wanted to update you where we're at. And I still haven't totally completed the the big board, you know. I think, I think it'd be really interesting to see uh, maybe that Boss RC5 would be worthwhile. I don't know yet. But I'll let you know in the next episode, promise. Alright, very good. See you next time. Okay, bye.